Hi, my name is Ozzy Jurok, and I'm the host of OzBuzz, where we interview eclectic and successful uh, people in and around the business umbrella. And today we are really pleased to have with us the very well-known Mr. Roberto Arario, who is an international business and leadership coach. He has some 20 years experience, and he is a passionate person about helping companies achieve not just sustainable growth, but rapid sustainable growth. And he's a certified scaling up coach, and he's gonna tell us what that is in a minute. And he has worked with 500, Fortune 500 companies, and in particular also high growth small companies. He works with leaders uh, personally, his approach is practical, he's results oriented, and he's a firm believer in the power of clarity, focus, and execution. Wow, I'm really looking forward to get a little bit more focus and clarity myself. Welcome, Arario. Hi, Roberto. So great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and your experience as a business coach? And how did you sure. get started? Yeah, so this year is a special year for me because it's been uh, 20 years now that I've been, uh, been coaching companies and leaders. So it's uh, something that it's way more than a job. It is kind of a calling that keeps me alive and passionate about what I do. And I got into this from uh, my previous executive position in the banking industry, where I was getting a lot of uh, value more externally than internally. And when I realized that what really uh, fed my my inner part was helping others and uh, supporting growth I got into coaching initially uh, as an executive coach. Then uh, I started getting more and more into business uh, leaders and see how they could improve also the business dynamics. And that's how uh, eventually I am now I'm doing business coaching for uh, mid-large organizations as well as uh, supporting leaders within those organizations. And uh, yeah, I I just love it. So now it's been uh, 20 years and still in love with it. So it must be it must be a good thing for me, I guess. Well, I'm sure you have also over the time you have developed a mythology, myth, methodology, right? That you use uh, as as a basic principle. So so what would be sort of the key principle of of what you uh, what you teach? Yeah. So. Um, Let's uh, let's say that in the last 20 years, I've been uh, uh, acquiring a lot of certifications and knowledge because in the in the line of work that I do, you need to be constantly up to date, up to date with best practices, but also up to date with uh, what is working in a different dynamic, right? Yeah. I mean, right now we have AI, we have uh, pricing that becomes really relevant in a market considering inflation and everything that is going on right now. So within all of that, I um, I specialized in uh, one methodology that over the others I use the most that is scaling up, and scaling up is an interesting methodology because it's a it's a real platform in a sense. Like you can uh, plug in different uh, thought leadership uh, models, so you can uh, plug in leadership components or uh, pricing components. But the framework of scaling up is identifying four main areas to support companies' growth. People, strategy, execution, and cash. So ultimately what you need to do is, in a nutshell, you wanna make sure that there is a culture of happiness and accountability when it comes to people. So you get the right people on the bus. You look at strategy and say, how are we differentiating ourselves? How mm -hmm. are we positioning ourselves in the market in the eyes of the customer, but also internally where everybody understands what we're trying to do. Then the third component is execution, where if you want to be profitable and efficient in the processes that you run, you need to have a proper execution. That means you can have the best brilliant strategy in the world if you don't execute it properly. And I know that this is, this is you, you, you've been saying this for so many years. I've known you for, I think, 12 years now. And since the first day when I heard you speaking, that was all, right? It's all about action, 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 right? You, you don't take the right action. And within a company, that action becomes quite complex because there are many people involved, but you want to make sure that those actions, so processes are efficient and profitable and repeatable. So that actually people know how to run those processes and you can make money every time you run a process rather than wasting money. And yeah. then the last component, so we, look, we looked at people, strategy, execution, 
The last one is cash. Every business should ideally have a business model that generates enough cash to support growth, <laughs> ideally. Right? But sometimes you need also cash from the outside. You need investors, you need bank because your growth is too fast and growth obviously sucks cash and you need external. But the idea is how can you build a company that actually, and I have a specific example here that I think everybody could relate, um, a company that I've been working with where their margin were about 20 five uh, percent and they are in construction so uh, probably your audience will relate to, to this client and um, and they were kind of stalling in terms of growth we started working together we did major intervention on the people side and on the alignment side they ended up the following year doubling the revenue but increasing their margin to 32.8 percent so it's like in construction obviously it's it's a big number it's uh it's sure. not something that you discount when a company is in that field it's not like having a saas company where software can be scaled very easily and uh, and efficiently here is more like it's people working and building stuff so uh for them to produce their result was very very relevant so these four are pretty much the the essence and as i said multiple plugins within this now this this company you're talking about, I guess you can't tell us who it was, but uh, did you, uh, you you feel that the growth that came to that uh, and the success was entirely through the scaling up framework that you that you put in? Yeah. So how long does that take you? I mean, do you you go inside the company, you meet with people, but is there sort of a timetable that you have, or it depends mm. on the company? It depends on the company, the level of maturity and what they need. And again, Scaling Up is a fantastic framework, as I said, like in terms of being an open platform, right? So I will lean more towards my experience, for example, in leadership coaching, if I see that the CEO needs more support because maybe they have very strong processes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a cookie cutter type of thing where you come in, you follow a consulting instruction or a consulting manual, and then you say, okay, here you go. It's yeah. a very customized. It's almost like when you go and you get a, a tailor-made suit. Right? You, you go there, uh, the, the, the tailor knows how to cut yeah. depending on what you need, but then uh, uh, you, you kind of need to do the work internally. Yeah. And the, the timeline changed. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, that's very important. I was once uh, in NBC, we have a number of initiatives that I that have originally come either through universities or I used to be a mentor uh, for uh, students uh, at UBC and I'd get one one guy and or one gal and then we have a one on one. But once in a while you also get lent out to a company and I I'll never forget that years ago I was an outsider on purpose sent to the middle management group. There was twenty two managers there, and I noticed right away. You know I'm I'm a people person, but I noticed everyone really into this you know this was a new initiative it was uh, supposed to be you know the cat's meow everybody was doing it and i finally said look guys and girls i mean i i have no skin in the game you know i i'm here i'm i can bounce things off we have a successful organization we have some ideas but i said look as he says our ceo always goes to some course and then he comes back with all these new ideas. And then he tells us about it, tells us to do it. And he goes away and gets some more ideas while we still, you know. So it's, I guess it's very important to yeah. spend that time with the CEO because if he's not on site, yeah. if he doesn't show by example or yes. pushing or checking into yeah. it, then it doesn't get done. Yes. And uh, this is one of the things that I... I also had to learn on my own uh, skin, right? When I started, I was working only with the senior leaders on the executive coaching side. And when you work for an executive, you want to improve their ability to lead, but you don't work necessarily with the entire team. Now I work only with the entire team. So the CEO must be on board, but then the team needs to be involved yeah. in the process because that's ultimately how you can create a ripple effect across the entire company. And uh, and I usually, before I just answer your question, the timeline, uh, usually when I start working, I do two, three days of uh, strategic planning just to get where they are and what are the areas that they need to work on. Uh, we do some assessments before or do some one-on-ones interviews, kind of get the feeling and the connection about what what is the company uh, challenge, constraints, opportunities right there from my perspective. 
and also from their perspective. Then we start working and every month we meet like uh, three hours, depending on uh, on the size of the company. Ideally, it's kind of a three hour every every month. And then every quarter, we kind of review the last 90 days for a full day. We review the last 90 days. We plan the next 90 days. Uh, we go deeper into some part of the strategy. And then we rinse and repeat. Like they yeah. are in constant progress. Within one or two quarters, they get really uh, accelerated. They, they get more aligned around what's really important. And the growth accelerates dramatically. Within one year, they, they just see things going through the sky. Now, does it always happen? Of course, it's people dependent, right? It is, it's nothing magical behind this. There is people that want to do the work. They get frustrated when uh, they can't see the results. Most of the times, because before I start working with a company, I really want to make sure that there is a good fit. It's almost a relationship, right? I mean, you, sure. you can't. Uh, build a friendship with somebody or uh, go on a trip with somebody that doesn't share the same uh, approach. And once I start working, more often than not, what happens is like very capable people, great leaders, they get in the same room, they are frustrated because something is off. Either their yeah. communication or they don't get heard or they, they cannot figure out what's important or they... So the moment... I support that part of communication, alignment, strategy questions that points them in the right direction. Then it's literally like having an NBA team that you you, you yeah. just tell them how to play together. It's not that you need to explain how to play the game. Yeah. They, you, they just need they to know how to play the game, but together is important. Yes. I think the other thing is the constant uh, meeting. I mean, I've, I've in my, my life, I spent a lot of time as a branch manager, hiring salespeople. I, I ran a very large corporation with 10,000 people. <laughs> and um, one thing I learned was that also people, they, they talk a lot, but they're not necessarily do, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think that people don't necessarily do what you expect them to do. You know, when you yeah. hire somebody, they're on their best behavior and, you know, and everything, you expect them to do something. But people, and it's, I'm an old manager, but people... Yeah. Don't do what you expect them to do. They do what you inspect with yes. respect, right? Yes. So if, if my salespeople knew, you know, this is the goal that we made, you know, and then they expected me on a regular yeah. basis to check and how are we doing? Yeah. You know, what can I do to help? And that is that togetherness that an outsider brings yes. to a company because a lot of them are common challenges among all companies, right? It's the communication skills. Yeah. It's maybe the leadership. Something is missing. But they all, in the end, want to work together. Yes. They're all success-oriented, right? If the company's not successful, I'm not successful. So that's why that's somebody right. like you is, is very, very important. That brings me to the idea of culture. You know, How mm -hmm. do you feel about a culture in a company if you're so many people working from home? Yeah, yeah. And uh, interesting. Yesterday, I had two interesting conversations with two CEOs of two very different companies. One... Uh, that is completely remote. They decided one year ago to say, you know, we're gonna close the offices and we're just gonna have people all over North America working together remotely. And I'm like, wow, that, that's a big a, a big shift, right? Because he said, I didn't wanna be in the hybrid model where some were remote and some were not remote because ultimately you end up with two cultures and how can, uh, can I have two cultures? I want one culture. So everybody on the same page, everybody is remote. We do meetings on a regular basis. And then I trust people. I'm going to hire people that I feel that I, they are trustworthy. I, As you said, I inspect. But at the same time, is the team success that brings individual success as well. So yeah. these people are highly motivated. Companies growing very well. Everybody has their own lifestyle. And everybody gets the, the results that they say they were going to produce. And some people work from a share that we work uh, office space. Other work from a basement at home. Other ones got a private office somewhere. It's totally fine. Everybody has their own style, but everybody's working well. And, uh, and this CEO is very, very specific around the values and making sure that the values are kept alive within the organization. The other CEO is the relatively new CEO of a 35-year-old company that uh, is in a very hard uh, business. So the, 
there must be physicality and uh, without saying it's quite well known in uh, in north america but I, I i can't provide too many details right now but uh and the challenge there is that with the different locations and different ages how do we keep the, the culture alive and one conversation that we had yesterday like culture is not kumbaya it's not like yay we have these values fantastic let's uh let's live by the value and the purpose and let's make sure everybody's happy and pretends that uh, it's aligned to those values. Culture is about results. Culture is about building a tribe. It more, it's even more than a community. It's literally a tribe, but almost like uh, if you share those values, you belong, you thrive in that tribe because you feel like this, this is where I, I want to be. These are the people I want to work with. These are the, things mm -hmm. that I want to accomplish together. And these are the rules. If you don't belong, you just say, these are For me. crazy, right? Yeah. They're, they're too weird that they don't, I don't belong here. I don't want to be here. I, I, I don't like that. And mm -hmm. that's totally fine. So the culture allows you to create that bond among people, but it's not just, again, some abstract concept is what allows things to happen. Because I'll give you a specific example. If somebody doesn't belong to a community or to this tribe the, the way i define it ultimately they will not collaborate because they will talk to somebody who is different from them who believes that something uh, important uh, yeah. like having going the extra mile or uh, uh, or being completely open and vulnerable is not acceptable the other ones believes that it is acceptable they will not cooperate now remove collaboration between two teams and now here you go like here you have a lot of effort in two different directions. And that's what ultimately we want to create. So culture is literally the, the foundation of strategy, is the foundation of execution, is the foundation of cash management. Without that, everything else becomes very loose. Can you make a successful, successful company without that culture? You can, but you're leaving a lot of money on the table and it takes a lot of effort to compensate for the lack of alignment yeah and that's and that that is very true i mean I, I became president of a company that really had just merged the, the number one in its field with the number two in its field and each company brought with it their own values and cultures and whatnots mm -hmm. and and it, it uh, the only reason that i got the, the presidency was that in my area i was able to merge it easily and in quebec for instance we had mass walkouts right mm -hmm. and it always came back to you know who are we what are we standing for and so we rebuilt everything i mean i literally ran through the branches and threw away everything that was a, had a name from the old company on it whichever it was if there was anything good let's redo it under the new company name but you know but get everybody together yeah but I found, and that's probably what make it difficult for me today, at head office, we had 3,000 people, and we designed the coffee stations, we designed a little coffee shop, we designed uh, places where people would meet. Now, yes. we had, as, as you pointed out, the new world was in everybody's mind, because we really went to emphasize the new structure, the new name, the new, the ethical structure, all of the wonderful things that we felt we were. And we reinforced this uh, continuously, but I felt it helped. They were all in the office, right? So yes. for me to now be in charge, I, I, I want them back, right? It's it's like it's I want to knock them on the shoulder and say, you know, how are things going? You know, I mean, if, as a as a working CEO, so it's it's to be able to be totally um, separate. Where does the inspection come in? How do you how do yeah. you handle that? Okay, that's uh, that's obviously you point a very challenging element right now because many companies are struggling with that. Like, how do I how do I create that connection? And a couple of elements come to mind. One is that the inspection comes from uh, sharing the priorities across the entire team, leadership team, obviously, not necessarily the entire company, mm -hmm. possibly also the entire company, but. What happens is like the inspection doesn't become just one on one, but it becomes one to many. It's literally like, I mean, back to the analogy of a player, a single player is not accountable to the coach, is accountable to the team. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. So if I come in and I say, uh, okay, these are the top five things that I want to get accomplished in the next 90 days. Yeah. And I talk to the team, like it happened two days ago, I was with, uh, with a company, we did the, the, the quarterly planning. And uh, each 
team member shared what they were going to accomplish after we decided what the company wanted to accomplish. And sure enough, when uh, each individual said, I'm going to do these five things, there were other people from the leadership team asking, are you sure? I mean, I need your help with that. Or can I help you with the other project? So there is now a moment of cohesion because it's not anymore my silos. It's not just anymore what I'm going to do, right. but it's more like how I am contributing to the success of the team and the company. So everybody now knows what everybody else is doing. And every week, they're going to review those five things. Are you progressing? Are you green? Are you yellow? Do you something is going on? Are you red? Something got blocked, yeah. stopped that you need to change. How can we support? Because if you fail, the team is failing. Yeah. And so it's really communication continued. It's maybe not a copy station. Maybe it's a Zoom meeting That's every right. second day by the CEO, or maybe it's somewhere. But yeah. people need to still have that sense of belonging, I feel. They and, do. And, and, and the inspection, I always make sure people don't do what you expect. You do what you inspect, but yes. respect. You're not with respect. Sitting over yes. their shoulder and saying, hey, yes. what are you doing wrong or what? Now, with yeah. all of those things that, that is absolutely vital to have, and particularly in this new world, to all of the challenges and the questions that people have, and we have people that are, you know, quitting more often than we did before. Uh, we have the crazy world. We have an a, economy supposedly going to recession, but at the same time, yeah, in October 2023, we have full employment, and, and uh, you know, it's hard to keep people. I mean, what advice do you have for attracting and retaining top talent in a company? Yeah, and uh, and ultimately that's what's going to make a success or not of the company and the, the quality of the people that uh, you keep engaged. And just I want to tie this to what you were saying before in terms of inspection and uh, inspect with respect. I think that when people have full ownership about what they committed, mm -hmm. then they are also willing to execute on what they committed to achieving. Therefore, when there is full transparency, everybody can access a spreadsheet where I can see what your five priorities are, when I, when you can see what my five priorities are, and every week we review that, there mm -hmm. is a full transparency, full support, and I own those five things. So I don't even see your inspection or your questions as a micromanagement anymore, but as a way mm -hmm. for me to be kept accountable for my right. work. So right. if, if, and now coming back to the talent, if somebody doesn't have that trait, probably doesn't belong to a company that wants to produce results, right? There's somebody that's yeah. lacking off. Or, yeah. And how do I attract those people? Because we know that getting an A player, if you want to call it that way, or a top performer in, the, in your space can do the work of two, sometimes three people that are mediocre people. So it's really, really important. And that's why what I say is like, please, let's switch. I, there, there, there is a label that I want to constantly switch when I work with companies from hiring to recruiting, where mm -hmm. the difference I make between these two terms is like you hire somebody when uh, a position is vacant or when there is a need because somebody just dropped, uh, uh, stopped working for you and now you need to replace and the hire is very reactive. Mm -hmm. Recruitment in terms of process, it's like marketing. Marketing never stops. Recruitment never stops. You don't find best clients by, uh, oh my gosh, I need a client. Let me call, call, and tomorrow I'll, I'll find a client. You don't. <laughs> yeah. You build your reputation, your yeah. brand, right? Same with, with recruitment. If you build a, a strong pipeline, if your brand as a company in the eyes of the employee, no, not in the eyes of the customer. Recruitment is uh, making sure that the process is in place for the employee so that the employee appreciate your name because maybe you're, you got some rewards or maybe because you're rating on glass doors, maybe because you've been constantly creating new content or showing how you care about your people, then those A players will be warm to be reached when you need help with growing your company. So that's, that's one element. You kind of want to make sure that you are constantly present in their eyes. So through formal or informal communication that allows them to know what you're doing. The second part is that once they are in, now you need to treat them properly. How do you treat an A player properly? Sure enough, you want to make sure that you remove all the obstacles because usually top performers don't need to be said 
in a very specific manner what to do. They need to be freed up to do what yeah. they know how to do. And yeah. more often than not, you remove their, op their obstacles in front of them, yeah. the more successful they are. So that's one element. The other element is that you want to make sure that the reason why they joined you is actually something that they will find within the company. And that comes back to culture. Meaning if you tolerate, say, a top performer in another area of your company that is disrupting your culture because they are great salespeople, but absolutely um, rude with other people. They are not collaborative. They put other people down and they are mm -hmm. toxic for the environment. Guess what the other A player are going to see? Like this CEO or this team or this company doesn't really care about culture. Absolutely. I'm going to go somewhere else because they have many, many options. So it comes down to these things. Build a brand that is solid, intentional, and directed towards employees and build a culture that allows them to be to, to, to feel a sense of belonging and to be productive and to be accountable and to be praised and rewarded for the productivity that they bring to the table. But so if they don't, if they don't, you have to be strong enough to say goodbye, you know, ah, yes. and go, go with God, but go, you know. And yes. Yeah. If, yeah you, because you. if you don't do it, all the other top producers look around saying, look, he gets away or she gets away with this. And, you know, that wasn't really good for our customers, it's not good for my image and all this. And then they start to doubt, right? And then the cancer spreads, right? In an office. That's right. I remember That's once right. years and years ago, I took our very top producer, third best in the company. But in the office, and I at that time was a regional manager, in the office I kept hearing, she was, she was constantly saying she was looking to go somewhere else. And then she was, so I took her for lunch. And, and I, when we sat down, I said, two things are gonna happen here. We're gonna have a nice lunch. And then when you leave, you go to the office and you tell everybody you're staying and you like it, you like a manager. And then, you know, I will love you forever and all this. But on the other hand, if you don't do that, then you quit. Go into the office, quit now. I'm going to sit here, get drunk and cry to lose you. But that's the only options that are left. And when you're back and coming back, you're one of the top producers. Everybody loves what you do. But in these particular areas, you know, we just can't have you constantly saying you're going somewhere else. Now, she stayed and, and um, uh, it worked really well for her because she got appreciation at the same time there was no doubt in her mind as to what my actions would be, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I was very young. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was one of the best things I ever did. Learn, because mm -hmm. I realized I had an impact, right? And we can live without her. She is yes. not the total company. That's but by right. her saying to everybody, it became an asset. The cancer was healed, you know, and, and more people probably stayed. And in the end, she actually became one of our first managers. It's a long story, but yes. to me, I think it's so important that you understand you have an yeah. existing top producer group and you want to add people to it. And top producers want to be among other top producers. That's right. And they are expecting some rules. You know, they want you yes. to show them how to make more money or whatever, right? Now, yes. you're in an environment that is probably, we've never had so many changes ever. The business environment is just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, here we have every, every numbers, every metric that we're using is different. How do you, your methodology, methodology, how does it adapt to new challenges and opportunities? Yeah, as I mentioned, like having kind of an open platform rather than uh, uh, an instruction manual allows me really to pull in whatever is needed for the situation, right? And uh, right now, again, pricing and compensation are probably the two uh, most important pieces in a, such a dynamic uh, microeconomic economies, uh, environment. So where you actually have these challenges on the price, as you said, like inflation, are, gonna, are we going to go into a recession or not? How are we going to price our products? All that dynamic needs to be examined and needs to be taken care of. On the other end, you have AI and uh, you have a, a lot sure. of work that can be automated. How, and, and then you look at the people within the company. How do we manage compensation? Should we link the compensation to just a monetary component? Should we expand the scope of the compensation into, uh, and expand it to multiple parts and pieces that today are very important? Like, uh, what are the elements that we need to have in order to attract talents? Because clearly, 
talent and top players want to be paid the market maybe above the market but it's not just by doubling the salaries that you're going to no. get the top talents mm -hmm. right so you want to make sure that all of that is taken into consideration so for me the adaptation comes from uh, monitoring what's going on and then uh, pull in my methodology whatever is needed for that specific situation and sometimes it's just hey the market is growing we need to differentiate ourselves so we need to double down on the strategy and positioning other times is the market is not growing we need to increase efficiency so let's make sure that the kpis are proper to increase um, profitability and decrease cost and making sure that people can uh, rely on those processes so it's a very it's a constant evolution well the other thing is and i think it's important to have an outsider a credited credible outsider coming in you know if the middle management wants to achieve that they take a do-it-yourself management book and how to restructure the buy-in may be not as simple as if they see you and they say look we work with all of these corporations and that's what we yeah. found out i mean look you're a scaling up certified coach i mean you know mm -hmm. you've learned to support uh, and, and and the resources that businesses need but how do you so when you implement a framework it's always different for every company. Or do you have certain yeah. rules that first have to be achieved? You you wonder like how do I yeah. how I implement actually the, the framework yeah. within the company? Uh, uh, as I mentioned, like it, it is really different from each company, and my understanding uh, comes from uh, from the first assessments that I I run, and the the human component as well. Like where do the, the leaders stand? within that company. There are leaders that have been uh, in the company for so long that they yeah. see only their way and they are really not yeah. interested in uh, scaling the company. Other ones that are uh, just just yes men and yes women, uh, women just to say uh, I'm okay with whatever the CEO says as long as my job is not jeopardized. And then you have the ones instead of like, hey, I want to, I have ambitions. I, I want to I wanna grow the company. I want to get to the next level. And and that gives me already the area. Where do we need to start? Do we start with people? Usually that's where you want to start. But what, what is the, the main challenge? Is it the people side or is it on the strategy side? Is it on the execution side? Is it on the cash side? So once the assessment comes in and I interviewed all the leader, leaders, then I propose a plan of action. Say, okay, let's start investigating this. Now, I don't have all the solutions. Because obviously, I'm I'm not coming in. Every as a company consultant. is different. Every company yes, is different. Sure. Absolutely. But what I come in with is the ability to ask questions and to create a structure within which they find their own answers. And we are going to investigate where to find the answers. So for me, it's literally, and this what allows me to have a very wide range of sectors and uh, or companies in different sectors and industries, because ultimately it's about how are you running your company? What type of questions? Are you asking where are you looking for the answers how do you structure something that is reliable and over time so uh, coming in if i see that there is a cash problem okay the first session the second session is going to be dedicated to fix that problem yeah. and it can be cash flow or it can be maybe the business model that needs to be perfected and then we can move to strategy and then maybe it's an execution challenge so it really changes so what we keep though just to provide something that is more uh, uh, helpful for uh, your listeners as well is a framework where everybody knows what to expect to mm -hmm. talk about when they meet so every every 12 months they can expect to revisit the entire strategy and positioning of the company unless something happened in between that they had to but generally speaking right mm -hmm. every quarter they can expect to sit down review some part of the strategy, but making sure that their execution is clear for the next 90 days. Mm -hmm. What are we going to accomplish? Because you can only accomplish things within a reach. You can't plan for a year and a half from now because mm -hmm. everything changes. So, But 90 days are relatively under your control. And that they can expect that. On a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, they sit down and mo monitor progress towards those outcomes that they decided to achieve. And then on a weekly basis, they get together, they monitor quickly what's going on.
but they also solve problems. And then on a daily basis, they kind of review briefly what uh, is going on in terms of just in a quick update. So ultimately, they come to each meeting with a clear purpose, clear outcome, structured agenda, and they know, okay, we're going to talk about strategy this day. We're going to talk about execution this day. So there is no confusion. And you don't end up, you don't start a meeting talking about strategy, end up, who's going to send email to the client that wrote yesterday? Let's, yeah. because that's what creates confusion, right? It's, uh, you want to make sure that this is taken care of. Well, and that's what we started out. You know, you, uh, you, you believe in the power of clarity, right? Yeah. The power of focus, right? And then, of course, execution. And, you know, yes. the thing is, we all have these words and we all uh, know that Tom Peters had the in search of excellence and then he had all of these answers and and, uh, and then half the companies went bankrupt uh, afterwards. You know, what, what I like about your approach is that every company is uh, different. Um, uh, every uh, every co company needs a special attention. Yeah. Uh, it needs somebody uh, that that can understand all the, the vagaries of a company. And that's where experience comes in. You've yes. been 20 years uh, scaling up certified coach. So when they hire you, they, you bring with them that wealth of experience that you gained with with the whole gamut of companies that you, that you have worked with. Now, for the listeners on the podcast, uh, on the podcast, we will have a contact information. We have a website. And uh, will you allow us to put your email there? Of course, yes. Yeah, and so that'll be there. And then certainly if, if you're watching this on YouTube, all the information is is on the bottom. Do you have some final words for us, uh, Roberto? Um, I, yes. And the, the final words would be whatever you want to grow in your life, especially now, so let's talk about the business side. Just make sure that you do it with passion, that is aligned with your passion. Otherwise, you're going to build a golden prison and, and you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. A life with passion. You know, I certainly am 100% behind yeah. you. I believe that. So thank you so much for taking thank the time. You. And um, and uh, all the listeners, I would urge you to go to uh, Roberto's website and be surprised with some of the super uh, specific information that you find there that will help you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ozzy.